Hello, guys. My name is Angel Garcia. Um, I came to support my friend Eric, and while sitting there, I um, kind of thought of some issues that I've just been seeing with Homestead. I love this city. I really enjoy being here. Um, I've been here for the past three years, and about a year ago, me and my wife, we purchased a home on Kings Highway, and I can't be any happier with the city, honestly. This is the most unique, odd place in that I've ever been in, but I'm falling more in love with it every day. And I'm, I'm seeing that what I like about it so much is what many other people like about it. And you guys have been doing such a great job as far as bringing uh, more awareness to the good things of the city, which is causing for more and more people to want to come live here. And the city's starting to blow up with charter schools, with businesses, with all these things happening, which in my opinion is kind of like proof of things moving forward which I kind of like, not gonna lie to you. It's a pretty sweet deal, finding a nice house in a place where things are moving forward. So that brings me to my issue. There's a lot of people flocking down the homestead. There's a lot of people making homestead their home, uh, like myself. And the streets are not catching up to where, um, to the amount of people coming. Um, living here only three years, I've seen a big change in the population and I've seen a big change in the traffic. It's becoming atrocious. Uh, driving through Homestead sucks, um, and I don't know how to say it in any other way. Um, it's, it's terrible, especially crossing over Busway and Old Dixie Highway and US-1, going from New Homestead over to Old Homestead. It almost feels like you're trying to commute to downtown Miami, um, just crossing those streetlights. So I've, I've had some experience um, where I lived in downtown Chicago for a while, was, a built, was able to rub shoulders with people along yourselves and, and kind of hearing about what they would do with the streets there. And one of the things that they would do is they have sensors on lights to kind of help. Is that my buzzer? Go, go ahead, finish right. off. So Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I just want, I don't know if something's being done. I see a lot of construction happening everywhere. I don't know the behind the scenes stuff, but I just want to know if you guys are aware of the terrible um, driving conditions here in Homestead just because of the population, which is, you know what, that's not a bad problem to have. Too many people in the city. Uh, I think we could have other issues. So I just want to know, is it, you guys aware of it? Is something being done? Because I like driving and getting places a lot faster than what I'm getting right now. Real simple. Mr. Manager. Mayor, I, that's another one of these issues that our Director of Public Works can help you with because unfortunately we don't control the traffic lights either, but it's, it's important for us to be able to explain the system, and Julio, would you mind doing that? Correct, yeah, I, I was just gonna mention that. Again, unfortunately, when it comes down to traffic signals and anything that's a, a, a traffic device, they're under the jurisdiction of the county. Now, we are very much aware of the issues that you mentioned, and that's something that we're always uh, dealing with the county, trying to get some relief. They've come from time to time and adjust the timers of, of the traffic signals, et cetera. And uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But it's an ongoing issue that we're trying to deal with the county. And when it comes down to the old part of town, what happens is there's not a lot of right of way to you, to, that's available to widen roads, et cetera. So mm -hmm. we have to deal with what's there and, um, and, and try to resolve the issue with the technology, like you said, you know, the, the sensors, et cetera, mm -hmm. those type of things. And the county has a program now that they're, that they're implementing where They've been doing it for quite a while, which is uh, to, it, it's a system to synchronize all the traffic signals, basically to, to allow traffic to flow a little more freely than, than, than it does in the past. If you have you know, three green lights and a red, well, that red is gonna stop anybody from going through the greens, you know, mm -hmm. obviously. So those are the type of things that they're working on and we are constantly uh, bringing up those issues with the county uh, to try to get some, some uh, relief in terms of, of of the way traffic flows, especially in, in congested areas that, that are old and, and don't have a lot of grow, uh, space to grow in terms of- One of the things things. too is uh, uh, we'd love for anybody to help us, to help you by weighing in at the county as well and expressing your concerns because it's from the most frustrating thing for me coming from New York down to Florida, I've been here now 10 years, is up there we had a computer room in our city hall where we controlled every traffic light mm. in the city we had a daytime, we had a nighttime population of 50,000, but a daytime of 150,000. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get all those people in and out pretty easily because all the traffic lights were synchronized and electronic. And we had people in City Hall just worrying about our city. 
if the county had controlled our light, our lights, it had been a disaster just because they've got a much larger area to deal with. Mm. So that's just one of the things many of the cities down here struggle with. But when the public weighs in, sometimes with your, your county commissioner or the county mayor's office, you'll get on their radar screen as well and help us because we're, we're constantly pushing to try to get some help in that regard. But it's a very large county and sometimes uh, the squeakiest wheels get de dealt with first. What we'll, what we'll do is I'll work with the staff and we'll craft and draft a, a, a substantial letter and we'll get all the council members to sign on and we'll send it forward because the, se the sequencing of the lights could be a real easy, easy problem yeah. mm -hmm. to solve because if it's set up on a traffic count of 10 cars and now we're at 100 cars, obviously it's not going to function correctly. Mm -hmm. So um, Frank Bal Balzabri is out here from the Miami-Dade County Mayor's Office. He's a good ally for us. We'll craft a, a letter and mm -hmm. I'll ask each council member to take a look at it, add to it, subtract okay. from it, and we'll send something forward to the county and, and request uh, okay. immediate relief. Okay. Well, one last thing. Um, I, I know there's problems in the city. I, I spent a lot of time with my buddy, with my buddy Eric, and, and, he kind of, and I agree with a lot of things that he has issues with, um, the gentleman that spoke earlier. Um, but I, I just want to let you guys know, honestly, I, I think you guys are doing a good job. Um, I know you, Homestead's never been perfect. There's going to be crappy cops. There's going to be crappy teachers everywhere. You can't stop that. But um, the time I've been here at Homestead, um, I have the honor to be a pastor here, and I've just, I've just loved this city. So, you know, kudos to you guys. Thank you for the labor you guys put into this. I know a lot of you um, don't make buttload money. Um, you guys, a lot of you guys, it's borderline volunteer work. So for, for me and my family and from a few people that I speak about this often in my church, thank you guys. Um, this, is not, this is not easy. Leading people sucks. And, um, and leading such unusual people like what we are in Homestead is very more difficult. So, uh, so, so thank you guys. Um, but, but yeah, I know it's not perfect, but it's good so far. So thank you. We'll keep trying. Thank you. Anyone else?